Good evening and welcome to the uh, workshop of Buchanan for the uh, month of November. Please join me in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the, flag the, United the United States, United States of America, 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 and to, and the, to Republic the Republic for which it stands, which it stands one, one nation, nation, under God, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. Oh. That okay, was tricky, uh, Marcus. I have to. I, make, I, I thought you would like that. <laughs> I have to make a, an announcement to everybody who's listening to this that uh, our mayor, Teresa Knickerbocker, unfortunately uh, got in an accident today. She fell and she's right now hospitalized. So I ask anybody who's listening to this and all of the, the board and all the employees of Buchanan to say a prayer for her that she'll. She'll recover quickly and get back to uh, be, being the mayor and, and uh, leading this village the way she always has. Uh, I wanted, we were just, I want to bring up a, a few changes to the, uh, uh, to the agenda. The first thing, the, the discussion on the, the uh, planner, I think we should put off until the next workshop meeting in December since because the, uh, individual who was we were and voted on on that particular individual was he could not do it because he had a conflict of interest with the town right away we don't know exactly what that conflict is it's kind of a little bit confusing but i think it would be better for all the uh, trustees here to hear from the individual who we were considering replacing him with than rather than just talking about that now. But if you have any comments on that particular thing, I will entertain them now. Yes, uh, Deputy Mayor, I, I think we, we should have a resolution rescinding the Hardesty and Hanover contract and have a resolution ready for, with a, along with a prospectus from anybody else. Uh, I forgot the guy's name that uh, the administrator had mentioned, but we're, I'm sure that the terms and conditions of the contract are not verbatim. And therefore, the previous resolution, as well as the previous contract, would be null and void. And we should uh, formalize that through a resolution, as well as a new resolution to hire the, the new person with the new contract in terms of conditions. Oh, I, just, uh, I understand what you're saying, Sean. Uh, let me just ask uh, our, uh, our attorney, what does you think? Do we need to re-vote on the thing? Because there, it would be a different person, obviously, and Sean pointed out a new contract a different contract. In other words, they would probably be different prices and what they would do for what. Uh, Stephanie, what do you think of that? I do think that you should have a resolution rescinding that hiring. And obviously when you choose to hire somebody, then we would do that formally as well. Okay. So you think we should, uh, we have, then we should have to make a resolution for the next meeting to, to rescind the contract that we, that, that we uh, had voted on before. Correct. We wait till we uh, accept the new bid before we and rescind them, rescind one and accept the other one at the same time. Is there any reason, or should we just? Our state handover has refused employment with the bill. Yeah, right. They're, they're not. They they won't work for us. So, so so we could just go ahead and rescind that next yep. meeting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Have it laying out there, you know. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, I have one question. On the yes, go uh, ahead, Nick. David Smith, on this, we had a proposal from him for very close to the amount of Hardesty Hanover within $500, it seems. Uh, but um, in looking at his, um, in his letter, in his proposal, uh, outlining his scope of work, um, it does say that, they, that he would do the environmental review. Um, but then on the but then in the exclusions, um, I'm just scrolling there. Give me one second. Um, the exclusions, he says, the uh, preparing. I'm I'm looking at this four page letter and I can't find it. But he he did list it as an exclusion preparing the environment <clears throat> environmental impact statement. That would be something that would be. Yeah, here it is. It's at the uh, end of page three, beginning of page four. Beyond the scope of work identified above, uh, there would be an hourly rate and for such, such as preparing an environmental impact statement and responding to an Article 78 proceeding that would be billed on an hourly basis. So is he going to, would he be doing the environmental 
uh, required secret review or not is what I'm trying to figure out. No, that's that's a good question. I got that the last uh, at the last minute yesterday, and he he'll be ready to come at the next meeting to answer those questions. I can make sure I get that answer for you before the next meeting. Okay, because yeah, the, uh, the, right. previous, the previous the uh, previous price from Hardesty Hanover did include preparing the uh, the EIS. Yep, that's no why I think Dick, it, it's important that we we have him there so we yeah. we can we can okay. directly answer his I mean questions. Absolutely, okay. Marcus. If you speak to him, meanwhile. Just see if you can get clarification on that. Absolutely. Thanks. All right. Moving on, we have an open discussion. I'd like to kind of do this in a, a you know, I do, I personally do not have anything right now that I want to discuss, but I'll put, do it in alphabetical order. Anthony, is there anything on that you want to bring up to us here at this this session? No, not much. Uh, just. Uh... I understand what's going on in the circle with this, with this wall. I'm having a lot of criticism on this wall. The, uh, the aesthetically, it's, it's uneven. Um, I just want to get you guys' take on it. I did speak to Marcus. I spoke to Teresa a little bit. Not much, but I did speak to George about it. I, I just the, the outcome of, of the finished product just doesn't look right to me. I don't know what you guys' take is on it. Well, Anthony, I want to say... Uh, I'll, I'll react to it. I don't disagree with you. When you look at it, the, the wall is following the terrain. And so, um, normal, you know, you might expect to see the wall go level, um, which would mean it would be lower on the right side when the terrain goes up. However, it's kind of after the fact now. Um, and I think somebody like you and I that might deal with construction or masonry or in general, uh, for me, it's more woodworking you'd sort of develop an eye and you see things like that. And a lot of other people may not. And I think also once all the plantings are in, it will, it will uh, minimize the impact of it. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but, um, but what I think you, it's kind of after the fact now. I, I, you know? I guess after the fact is really not, I mean, there is a fix, there is a solution for everything, but whether or not we wanted to get into that kind of an expense, what was the yeah. budget on that wall, Marcus? Uh, it was third. Th uh, I think it was thirty-two or thirty-four. Or thirty-two. It was in a low third. Thirty-two thousand. Yeah, I think that was the number you gave. Yes. Yeah. yeah no, it, it is an idea, but a lot of people are mentioning it, and I'm sure you've all heard it as well. Uh, I, I just, me personally, I, I mean, I, I know it's, it's after the fact, but I feel that it's a uh, any co any contractor that builds anything wants their finished product to look the way it's supposed to look. And I know it follows the terrain, but it has to be level. I don't know what or what, why somebody would give that out as their finished product. You don't follow the terrain when you're building a wall. You don't follow the terrain when you're building a foundation. You, you, you got to work off of a level surface. Marcus, did that come up in the discussions when, um, you and George were dealing with the contractor. Uh, no, when when the um, when the design was created, uh, it, it, the contractor followed a three foot elevation above the sidewalk, and that's why they didn't. I do see the elevation going up to the right because it, because you follow the wall, you walk around the wall, it's three feet above the ground. So that's what he did. Um, and you know, they, I mean, like Anthony said, we could knock down. Uh, probably, uh, probably about six inches on the right hand side and that'll be additional cost and that's something we can you know if the board wants to do that there is additional cost to do that no i took the elevations i did the elevations over there just on the front of the wall it's 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 a little over 12 inches about 12 and a half inches off the top wow. wall is almost 11 inches off and that was done with a, a simple string line which uh, any contractor should have in hand I, I just, I, okay. you know, this is, it's important for us as the village. I mean, this is our centerpiece really. And I, I you know, I don't want to make a big deal about it, but it's, it's kind of, you know, it kind of is a big deal. This is something that everybody sees coming to the village. And, you know, if we pay for a product, we want the right product. Yeah. That's all. So Marcus, are you saying that we issued design specifications to build a wall that is not level? I, uh, I wish I had George here. I, George did the inspections and George gave him the design that he had to follow. And talking to George, 
it looked like that he met those requirements as far as I know. But I can have him give a memo to the board. That's my understanding no, from George. I spoke to George, and okay. you're exactly right. He did design the wall, and his design of the wall was three feet above grade. Right. That was his specs. I understand that. But the elevation change, the contour of the land, I, 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 I don't know how anybody does that. I just I feel like, as an engineer, you, you got to know better than that. I mean, the contour change, you don't follow a contour change. I mean, it's, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know. We got to do better than that. It's, I, I, it's, it's really not, it's not a good finished product. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, Nick, That's the sketch. I mean, I don't expect yeah. you to see this, but there was the sketch. I had a copy of it. There should be elevations on the sketch, and the contractor should have went by the elevations. He shouldn't have just. There's a, there's a cross section feet. just showing the three foot. Yeah, but there right. should have been an elevation. Right there, there's a cross section showing the three foot right there. That's a sketch, right? That should have been designed with, it should have been had a, a, a fixed point of elevation to work off of. And the wall would have been level. Yeah. You know, I uh, had looked at this while they were out there working. And I didn't like the way they were ending the wall. They were going to just, uh, the wall was just, they were just going to start feathering the dirt down so that behind the wall, the dirt would just sort of fade off instead of staying close to the line of the wall. And I thought that was nuts. So they created a little return to create like a planter effect on the end. So the soil was stayed at the level of the wall. And uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't pick up on this while they were building, but unfortunately that would have been a good time to pick up on this. Yeah, anytime you guys went out there to do a, a, a field meeting, I mean, I wish I was included, to be honest with you. I, I, that was something I would have picked up on. Well, I, mean, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't included. I just went out there and imposed myself on it because I didn't like the way the end was designed. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I didn't see it until after the fence was down. But, you know, the, yeah. the, the elevation change should have, been, should have been something picked up on right away. If the, board, if the board wishes, I can have George come to the next meeting. And we can talk about it further if you want to see what options there are if the board wants to discuss this. Well, I don't think I want George coming up with any options to fix it. I think I'm, I think, uh, I'm good. Okay. All right, Nick, what do you got? Um, well, the um, something we could just, we don't have to get too much into right now, but this is something I've brought up in the past and we've discussed uh, training for new trustees. I don't know if you all saw the email I sent this afternoon. Uh, but um, a lot, a lot of municipalities have a program, and I, I, um, you know, had spoken to a few different places. The village of Austin at one point, when some new trustees got in, they said they were sent right off for training. And I think that we need to have a, a program in place, um, you know. So when somebody new comes in, um, there's a list of topics, a list of resources, and um, sort of, you know, just sort of create the environment where um, the, to facilitate new trustees getting the knowledge they need in different areas. And um, don't get me wrong, I don't think every trustee has to be an expert in every area. You know, I'm stronger in, um, in the area of zoning I, and planning. I, I was involved with the zoning. I was on the zoning board for 10 years. Um, I'm, I personally feel a little bit weaker on areas of contract negotiations. Um, you know, I don't think everybody has to be an expert in every area, but, uh, but everybody needs to at least have a basic familiarity. Mm -hmm. And I think the village should have a program in place. Um, and when a new trustee gets in, hand them some resources. Um, you know, and if you look at the outline that I sent today in the email, which truthfully does not have the municipality name on it. And I'm trying to remember if this was from Austining or Mount Kisco. Um, but um, it is an outline that another Westchester municipality uses. I'll see if I can find anywhere in my records who this was from, but it, they don't have their name on there. And I, but it's a good outline. Uh, we don't have to follow that exactly, but, but I think it's something we need to address. Um, you know, uh, Anthony, uh, you're new and it takes a while. I know it takes everybody a while to get, get, uh, get going with this and get, you know, get up to speed. Uh, but I've also seen people on the board for many years 
who still are not up to speed on some basic topics. Um, and I think that I think that that needs to change um, because we don't, you know, we're not bringing in, you know, seasoned uh, planners and politicians. It's it's everybody who's willing to put in the time and and learn what they can. So I think that something like this would help the quality of the village board and help the individual members. So uh, we can look over the outline I sent, and I'd like to hear other ideas. But I think we should come up with some kind of um, um, outline. So when somebody new comes in, here's the list of the there's a list of the documents they get. Here's a list of the places you can go for workshops. Um, uh, there are New York uh, NICOM and New York State publications that are free, which you know, like like zoning 101, planning 101, village budgeting 101, just the basics. Um, and I think it would be good to to uh, to you know to have a more systematic approach to this. Um, when somebody new gets in on the board or somebody that's on the board already that wants to catch up on a particular area. Uh, uh, so if, if I may, Nick, I think that's a great idea. I can set up a welcome packet um, and create a working packet with projects ongoing. And a lot of stuff you've listed in there, I can also include NICOM's information. So I can yeah. work on that and present it to the board, see if you guys feel it's okay to set up and we can actually do a a welcome session where any new board member can maybe can meet with all department heads at a, at a day if they can make it. So I can, let me set up yeah. something up and I'll get you the whole board, something if you like it, then I'll get set a program set up for after the next election. And then we know, and then even current board members can join those meetings as well, if you wish. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would appreciate that. Okay. I'll set that up. Anything else, Nick? Um, well, uh, we, um, the one other thing, I just I just had a couple of questions. Um, the um, we I know we brought this up already. The parking on nine A, where where Cardellemi told Raulindo that he could park, and he parks his uh, flatbed there, and there's often a vehicle or two that sit there for months on end, and it just doesn't make sense to me to say it's private property, nothing we can do. So suppose. I have private property. I can't go and tell somebody you could park on the, on the grass in front of my house. I don't have that right. How does this guy, how can, how is this, you know, it just doesn't make sense to me that that's allowed. Uh, remember, um, uh, for Anthony and Sean may know this, remember when we talked to the DOT about their right of way and no parking, when we talked yes. about the sidewalk? And they said their determination was there was going to be no parking on the side of Rolindo. And they said they had discussions with the village that they didn't want to limit parking on the other side because there's houses on the other side. They said if the village wants to not allow parking on both sides, they'll be happy to enter entertain that. And then the village will have to enforce those rules and regulations. Well, so we were in the process of applying to the DOT to take over the parking enforcement when the whole thing with the sidewalk came up and we decided to wait because they were going to be addressing at least the west side of 9a um and we thought let this let's get that let them shake out that part of it but i don't think that means necessarily that i mean i mean there's some houses there and they have to have a right to park in front you know they have driveways and stuff but so but, um if, so if the board wish if the board remember we you know, state put up no parking signs on the side of Rolindo side. So if the, yeah. if the village board wants to do the same thing on the other side and put no parking for certain distances, the state said they're willing to discuss that, but they didn't think the village was interested in limiting parking on that side of the street. Well, that, so, that was a, that was a, a formal application to take over the enforcement that we were, we were involved with before the whole sidewalk project came about. So we just sort of let it ride. But I think that, you know, we might want to look at that again. Uh, I just, you know, there's a, a separate caveat on that, Nick. Uh, the no parking on the streets, that's what it is on the streets. When you're outside of the yellow, the white line on private property, that no parking does not include uh, the street. So mm -hmm. you can put up all the signs you want, but you can still park on somebody's property outside of the white line. Yeah, but is that um, a grass area? No. Why? You can't, you, you can't do that. Uh, you can't do that on Tate Avenue. Why can you do it on 9A? There's no place on Tate Avenue where you can actually get on the inside of the white line. 
the road, the parking he's on parking the road is pedestrian. white line to white line. No, he's parking. Okay. Well, is there a curb in that spot? No, it's grass. No, so grass. he's parking on the grass there. Yeah. So you can't put just because you have a no parking sign on a road doesn't mean you can't park on somebody's property. <clears throat> You, he's not parking on the street. All right, so then I could I could I could arrange with Rolando to pay me and allow him to park his pickup trucks on my front lawn. Be my guest. He he does it for with Con Edison. No, I think it's inconsistent with the, the with our regulations throughout the rest of the village, white line or not. That's okay. Where the where the um, you you're know, regulating if if you're fr- if you're first, going on somebody's property off of the road, you're trying to regulate their parking on their property. That's what you're doing. Which is what we do in the rest of the village. Okay. I mean, you know, there's uh, you got a couple of commercial properties on uh, Tate. Um, you know, if they have a driveway or a garage, that's one thing, but there's no parking on the grass. Uh, you know, some people do it, but there's not supposed to be parking on lawns anywhere in the village. Why well, should it? That- What's that? There's no code. It says no parking on front lawns. That's what on the front code lawns. says. Okay. Yeah. On front lawns. Yeah. That's only on front lawns, not side lawns, not on other people's property. You can park on the grass wherever you want as long as it's not on the front lawn. The front lawn, yep. And that's not somebody's front lawn. And that's off of the road. All right, Nick, you got anything else? Uh, no, I just want to, I got to look at the wording on that, on that because yep. it's just to me, that's absurd that, the, you know, they could just park on somebody, that somebody else can just let them park there like that. And it's, you know. All right. I'll look into that further. Thank okay. you. Sean? Yeah, I had a couple of things. When I was going through the bills the other day, I noticed that uh, we got charged for an investigation for a water leak. I'm sorry I didn't write down the, uh, the voucher number. I forgot. But uh, do we have uh, unknown water leak? Uh, whether it was on the village property or the uh, a neighbor's property. Do you know of hand markers? I'm sorry, I, I forgot to write down more information. But. I'm trying to remember. Cindy, do you remember? It, was this a company or? Yeah, I think it was, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was on a Han bill, I believe. But if you guys don't remember off hand, I'll go back down and look at no. it. Yeah. Cindy, do you remember? I, I don't remember, Sean. About okay. how much money do you remember? It was only for like an hour. It was only like a hundred bucks or something like that. But I was just, I was more concerned about what, what the leak was and whether we were going to be liable or whether we were going to force the homeowner to, to take care of. But I'll, I'll go down and get more information. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. I'll look it up too. No, and no problem, Sean. And just to let you know, just if we talk about water leaks, we had three, at least so far, three water main breaks in the last couple of days. So just to let you guys know too. Um, one was just repairing Shady Lane. That was... It was a pretty bad, bad one there. We had one in the in the Wick area, and we had another one on on another street. I forgot what that street was. So there is there's been a couple of water main breaks recently. Just to let you know, who is repairing the Wick uh, uh, leak? Uh, he uh, he repaired that himself already. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, another question I have is I know we had talked about uh, adopting the uh, the uh, LWRP report. The uh, we were going to give feedback as to the final report and whether we were going to accept their final report. Do we have a cutoff date for that? Uh, no, the committee is still actually reviewing uh, their final draft. Um, the the uh, subcommittee between the town and the, um, and the, and the village. Uh, so yeah, they, co- well, I'm sorry, Nick, you can answer that question. Asked, Go ahead. Uh, that uh, by the end of December, any, uh, <coughs> excuse me, not, not the village's vote on it, but any, comments on the draft, any corrections or things that we feel should be changed in the draft, um, any of those type of comments should be in by the end of December. So do we have somebody who's collating that or are we just going to send emails or are we going to well, put I'm, together I'm, addendums? I'm involved with the meetings. I'm, I'm, I, I will be looking through it uh, over the next few weeks myself a bit more. I, I had a, you know, looked at it a little bit, but I sort of tabled that while I was doing other things. Uh, I'm going to be, I intend to look through that over the next few weeks. And I had mentioned if anybody wants to feed comments back to me, I could relay them at the next meeting or in my comments. Okay. Uh, but the, I, but I do have some, a bunch of comments on it. Some of those reports, they talk about dredging. 
They also talked about perce uh, perceptions with parking. There's a, a lot of things in there that I believe are actually inaccurate. So I didn't know if everybody, if we were all going to get together and go over them or if we were just going to send them in. I don't think there's any intention to ever, for everyone to get together. You, you can, um, you know, we, you can request that if you want to do that. Uh, I, I'd be open to it. Right. Well, uh, you, can all, you can send me the comments and yeah. I can okay. pass them on. Okay. Or you could, you know. Send you uh, but yeah. certainly let me know uh, with the comments so I could focus on those when I look it over myself as well. Okay, thanks. And if you want to have the whole board discussion on it, you know. No, that's could, okay. I'll, I'll just send you my stuff. That's all. We could do it at the next workshop or something. Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah. About the fire escape repairs, has that been, been all taken care of? All done. Thank you. All done. Yes. All right. uh, the... Uh, I, last month or two months ago, we talked about the code, how the company gave us the interpretations of the code and we were going to divide it up. I never got any assignment. Do we just, I thought we were going to cut it up in thirds or fourths and each trustee was going to look at certain aspects of it and agree or disagree. Uh, where is that? Uh, I think pages. Yeah, I, I think it's in the same position. I was going to look through it as much as I can myself. All right, so, everything. so if you know, whatever you guys are interested in reviewing um, and you're interested in reviewing what sections and, and get right. comments together and get it to everybody, I think that would be helpful, at least to start something. I'll tell you what, it's 100 pages, right? <laughs> yeah, yep. So give me page one through 40. I'll do those. Okay, to simplify. cool. So email, I think I have that. So I'll yep. take page one through 40. Somebody else could take some other ones. I don't remember what topics do. I, I, you don't think it's more sensible to go by topic? No, because you're jumping around for 100 pages. Some of them have three things on a page. Some of them are one. Yeah. They're all yeah. over the place. Yeah. So, you know, the, the code, if somebody's is stuck on something. I had, I had offered to take the section on the, the zoning. Well, the zoning that's split out all over the place. Either way, however you want to do it. I'm yeah. going to do one through 40. That'd be great. If you guys want to spread it out or you get confused on something, we'll throw the yeah. confusing ones into a pile and then it. we'll decide, you know. If yeah. we can just get something moving because we have to make a decision on this by January, don't we? Yeah, uh, there's, no, there's, no, there's no drop that day, Sean. I mean, yeah. the, the more time it takes, the more the, I think the worse it is. So we're adopting new laws. We'll just uh -huh. confuse the issue. So you're absolutely right. I'm glad you... Um, you stated to start doing something because I'm reading it myself and hopefully the rest of the board members have some, some time to take a look at it too. And if you take page one through 40, that'll be fantastic. Yeah. I'll take care of that. Great. Thank you. Uh, another thing was, uh, did we ever, well, I know that the fire truck is up for auction. I saw that on some website. I think I might saw it on Facebook, but there was going to be other things that were going to be up for auction. I thought the company was going to take care of all of them. Are they going to split it up or how is that going to work? Yeah, uh, Bob is on. Bob is taking the lead on that. Everything is on on Auctions International. So, uh, Bob, why don't you talk about what was listed on there? What we have listed on there is the fire truck. We have our sweeper. We have an old uh, truck from the sewer plant. We have all the old office furniture and things like that, that we've uh, just uh, replaced. And we have two riding lawnmowers. So everything that we're going to auction is on the, uh, is on the website yeah. already, right? It's on auctionsinternational.com. And, and so on the way it works is I, I think a couple of days before, and, and by correct me, a couple of days before the board meeting, uh, we'll get a response of what the interest was and the board can accept it or decline it. Correct. Correct. Bob. Actually, the auction will end on December 6th, the day before the next village board meeting, and then the village board approves uh, the sale of everything. Okay, so that, that includes stuff that we didn't, that we took from Entergy and we don't want, we put that on there too? Um, I'm not sure if there's anything that we didn't take from Entergy that we didn't want. Most of the stuff is our, all our old furniture that we replaced okay. with the stuff from Entergy. And did, did we ever put together a list of the things that we got from Entergy or? Yeah, I'll get that over. Yeah, we finally got a finalized list uh, from um, Entergy. I'll be able to email that to you probably tomorrow with cool. everything. Uh, and what, uh, because they have to also report what they gave to us and Bob and the gentleman went through everything. So I'll get that over to you probably tomorrow. Okay. 
Didn't we get that already? I thought I saw that list. Or maybe it was a preliminary list. It was a preliminary. Yeah, it was a list going back and forth. But I have to finalize everything. We got a final list finally. I'll put it on my list and get it over to everybody. Another thing, I haven't been getting any communications from like NICOM or Westchester County municipal officials or anything on the seminars. I know in my previous terms of office, we were inundated with invitations <laughs> to different different events, different trainings, different everything. I don't get any emails. There's never anything in a box. Is there some, is there some disconnect between any state organizations or have, have things changed? Because like I said, we used to get, we used to get a ton of things. We used to have five, 10 things a, a month. You know, uh, we still, yeah. We've never even gotten the municipal officials uh, meeting invitations yet. Okay. I, I can't answer that question, but for NICOM, or NICOM if I get anything, I'll make sure I get, I'll get it over to you guys. Uh, I haven't seen anything recently, uh, Sean, uh, but if I do see anything, I definitely forward over to you. Cindy, um, recently, have you seen anything? not seen anything and the Westchester municipal officials we used to get that too and we don't get it so we'll have to find out how we can get that one back yeah we, okay. used, we, we used to get the notifications two weeks before any events even the planning seminars and zoning seminars were sent yeah. to the elected officials because uh, some elected officials act as the planning board and as you know uh, in villages the uh, trustees can act as the planning board. So many elected mm -hmm. officials had attended those as well as zoning conferences for any potential zoning that they might have. And we used to get those and they're held once a month also. A lot of them are in Rockland County. So I was wondering why we don't get anything. Okay, sure. those I know we send those out to the planning and zoning. So we'll just add you guys onto the list too. And, and, just Sean, put, uh, yeah, and, and Sean, just to let you know, on the night come, normally to get the, the the board member's email address, I'll make sure they have everybody's email address, but they normally send it directly to the mayor and the board member. So I'll double check with NICOM, make sure they have that. Okay. I just uh, put W, Sean, I just put WMOA in my, in my email search. The last thing I had was um, in May, uh, WMOA annual meeting. Um, that's and the last one. And then there was one in April, and there was one in March. I have emails from March, April, May, but uh, you're right, nothing recently. Well, the, w, the last meeting of the year, I think, is in May or June, and they start back up in September. They don't meet in July or August. So we should have been getting notifications from September, October, and we should have the current notification for the December yeah. meeting. There was an email from Teresa on September 9th for uh, a meeting in Lewisboro asking if if anyone was interested that all the board members are on September 9th. As I asked that at the meeting that on the September meeting. Yeah. All right. And uh, I didn't know if you guys were going to, uh, Rich, if you were going to talk about the creating this new position within the village where you want, I know we had said we were going to talk about this. You mean that uh, the part -time part? executive session? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I think I agree that I think it should be done in the meeting, like Nick said, but since we put a name on it, I think we'll uh, err on the safe, and the safe side and use, use it in the executive session. Well, it, it, we don't have to mention the name if you like. What I, what I would like to ask the board is um, what I'm looking to do for the public information, too, is to hire a part-time um, person. It'll be a senior account clerk to help in the finance department and to help with the building department. Uh, 17 and a half hours a week uh, for tw uh, for twenty dollars an hour. So if the board is agreeable to that, it will be at the next meeting to be approved. Uh, it's just to help the office work right now. Um, and if anybody works and sees what's going on in the office, we severely need additional help in that office to try to keep everything up to speed and up to date that we need to do. So if the so board has any questions specific regarding the job, wanted, we can discuss that. You want to discuss it now or do you want to discuss it in executive session? Uh, I'd like to discuss it now. Yeah, well, that's fine. Uh, uh, what, how long uh, will this person be employed? How long will this job be open for? Because, you know, we don't like to have part-times or temp positions open for a long time. Is this going to be a permanent part-time position? Is that what the uh, the idea is here? That's correct. 17 and a half hours. That, like we discussed, you have you can have seasonal person, which is four months, which is not limited to how many hours you want to do, uh, which is four months. If you do 17 and a half hours, there is no there is no um, timeline and the person can be let go at any time if they wish to. So I don't see an ending date, but it's 17 and a half hours. But if any time the board 
does not want to continue on, we can tell that person that, that the job is no longer available. Well, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, a permanent part-time position after a certain number of years of employment has civil service rights. So I'm not so sure that if we hire a part-time person with no end date that they can't be discharged. So no, no, yeah, Sean, it's only if you go if you go over, I think, 25 hours a week, then it's considered permanent part time. And then they also get and then in the union contract, they get benefits by civil service. And if you hire off our list, then they become a permanent position on the civil service rights. But that's what I'm saying. 17 and a half hours. Uh, I can get you documentation, Sean, if you like. But 17 and a half hours, it, that's a person at person serves at, at the well of the board. Because I remember I ran into this issue one time with a part-time employee that we wanted to uh, to discharge from service, and there were, there was a, there was an issue because of the civil service rates. So yeah, was that yeah was that was that person over seventeen and a half hours a week? Two and a half days a week. Okay, I'll, uh, uh, Sean. Before we do anything on December on December seventh, I'll double check with civil service. That was my understanding, my discussion with civil service. Yeah, well, yeah, could, you know, we could have, we could have strayed over to oh, greater than 17 and a half, you know, whatever, as long as we can get some assurances that yes, once this is no longer needed. And the other thing is, have, uh, has the union been consulted on this? Because we haven't had three people working in the office since 2008 or 2009. And there used to be three people in yeah. union jobs, positions in there. And uh, I was just wondering if, if they have, uh, if it's been discussed with them. Well, the union and the union contract says anybody hired over 20 hours, would okay. they, they'll become, they'll become a, civil, a, 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 per se, a union person okay. that gets benefits. I just want to keep it at below 20 hours. I mean, do you, do you think that they would have an issue with this? Uh, Bob is online. Bob, do you think there's well, any issue Bob's hiring somebody? the shop store. He's a foreman. Yeah. <laughs> All right, no, there, there might be something for executive session. So that, that, okay. that's fine. I'll, I can talk. To, I can talk to Randy about it tomorrow. I'll double check with civil service to, before we make any decision on December seventh. Okay. And do okay, we so have for, a budget for this position? I'm sorry, sorry. Who said? Do we have a budget for this position already? Yes, yes. There's money in the budget for it. Yes. I mean, uh, and, uh, can I interject here uh, so we can move on? Uh, how many people who are for doing this? Uh, you well, I don't want to. Uh, 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 yeah, but you, you guys don't want to make any. You can't make any decisions tonight. Um, uh, what I'm saying is, is no. Is, well, I'm just saying about the favorability of it. I'm not talking. Oh, okay. We'll vote on it, of course, naturally. The the next the next session, open session to everybody. But it, it's it's no use going forward with this unless we have mm -hmm. some positive feel about the I, thing. I, I, I agree. Uh, I I myself feel it, a positive about the thing if, if we can do that uh, and keep within the in within the guidelines of the uh, union contract and everything uh, and uh, and go forward with it but uh, Nick and um, Anthony how do you feel about it go ahead Anthony uh, if you're inundated in the office and you need the help then absolutely I'm all for it thank you for it, Nick folks. appreciate it I, I would uh, uh, basically agree with that. If, 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 there's, a, if there's a need and uh, everyone's overloaded, uh, that, you know, because we have discussed this in the past. I remember we had this discussion and thought that, that it would be a benefit to have a, a part time position there. And we talked about different ways of doing it. So, but I do have the, the questions regarding to making sure that we're not going to be, uh, you know, locked into it Agreed. if we want to make a change. Mm -hmm. And also, if we are going to hire a person. Um, you have a name. Do we need to put it? Do we need to advertise it? I actually, if you want to advertise it, I actually went out to a couple of people to try to get somebody with that will highly, that will recommend a person that has accounting experience and government experience. That's the reason this person came up. Highly recommended, but a whole bunch of people that I actually trust. Uh, if right. anybody well, has, then, if anybody has I, another suggestion in mind that wants to that, that wants to do this, well, just let me know. I'm fine with uh, somebody that comes highly recommended. I just want to make sure that we're not. That we don't, uh, you know, that if there's a requirement for us to uh, to post it or uh, make it competitive, if, if there's anything that we need to do in those regards, if we're not, and if for 17 and a half hours, if we're if we're not uh, respond, if we don't have to do that, and this is a All highly right. recommended person, it's fine with me. I, but I, I don't have an issue of, for I don't have an issue as long as, as long as we're not going to be locked in when the, when the need goes down. 
I don't want to yep. have to have a surplus manpower, you know. I agree. So I wouldn't wouldn't have an issue with it, and I don't believe part time has to go out to competitive. Correct. You know, as, as long as we're meeting the civil service requirements, and uh, you know, uh, and we can change whenever we want, uh, yes. the flexibility is great. So I, I I wouldn't have an issue with it as long as we're not going to end up with a bunch of grievances and end up having to post <laughs> it and end up having to do right. What want. Stephanie looks like she wants something to say. No, I would, I would, and you know, this is just my opinion. I would run that by the union, Marcus. Okay. Okay, Marcus. So you run it by them, and then uh, if if they're if they're uh, go with it, it seems we would be. So we're in the process of having a resolution at the next meeting to to hire, uh, unless it comes up about the uh, you, that we have to advertise it outside yep. of that. Yep. No problem. So, I get I get you all the answers. No problem. All right, uh, Sean. Is there anything else you got? No, thanks a lot. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to make a motion to go do in, into executive session. So moved. Second. 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 We're going to go into executive session where we won't. All in favor. Oh, yeah, all in favor. All, all right. in favor. All, all right. right. All right. Oh, oh I, I don't know, uh, Rich. Uh, Eileen raised her hand. Do you want to take public comment? Uh, okay, yeah, on? sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what's up? Point of order, Deputy Mayor. Yeah. Point of yeah. order. When we enter into executive session and vote, yeah. you're supposed to state as to the reason for going into executive session. Uh, to dis well, it would be to discuss personnel assignments and to, dis to, to discuss negotiations with labor in the in the village. Thank you. All right. All right. So I'm going to let Eileen allow, allow Eileen to speak. Okay, Eileen, you uh, unmute yourself. You can speak. Eileen, you're still muted. Okay. I, I was on with the um, Westchester Municipal uh, Federation, the Planning Federation the other night. And when Nick suggested the um, packet for any new members to a board, they also are suggesting a welcome packet or primer for any new planning board or zoning board members too. So um, I Good am point. going. To, I Good am point. going to con. I'm going to contact them. Uh, they gave one of the women as a uh, go to, and ask them because there is a book um, called a cookbook, a form book called a cookbook. So I'm going to inquire about that and see if that's a, a free book or how you get it. And um, Marcus, I'll let you know uh, some more. But I think it is important that the planning and zoning new members have information because it is daunting to just, you know, not really know what you have to do. That, that's great. Thank Eileen, you, thanks. Thank that's you. great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice Eileen. Thanksgiving, everybody. Have a nice Thanksgiving, Eileen. Yep, you Thank too. you. Thanksgiving. Okay. We're going to have a break, Nick, uh, Marcus. Yep, uh, yep, I'm going to go. Yep, I'm going to stop the recording and uh, give a, a few minute break.